today. Episcopal Centennial Gallatin County, founded about 150 years ago near Three Forks, the Gallatin Valley was described as a fair dimple on the cheek of nature. Uh, we also passed another milestone recently. We've reached a population of 100,000 people. Uh, but don't expect that to last long. At the rate we've been growing for the past few decades, about 3% a year, we'll add over 30,000 people to the valley in just the next 10 years. We'll double the 200,000 people in the next 25 years, just a little bit over a generation. So I know what you might be thinking, but really, Stopping growth just isn't in the cars. Many of us, if not most of us here tonight, have come from someplace else because this is such a great place. We need to choose where we're going to grow because it's going to make all the difference for our future. You know, the ironic thing about this sign is it's located right where we want growth to be, and that's in town. See, the problem is, is that too much of our growth in the last 30 years or so has been happening outside of our cities, and that's a problem because the average rural lot covers more than the whole city block. So we're going to be building tens of thousands of new homes over the next few decades, and we need to get more of them in town. So watch the dots and the dates, and we can see how growth has been sprawling farther and farther out into the valley, really starting in about the 1970s. And based on those trends, here's our projection for what we'll look like in 2025. Um, now, if we were to return to how we used to grow, about 70% of our growth in towns as opposed to the 50% that we've been getting uh, in the last few decades, in the next 10 years, about 10,000 acres of land, fewer than uh, acres of land would be paved over. Now, people always want to live in rural areas. That's cool. I was raised in a farm, but it really comes down to math. So really, why does all this matter? Well, it has all sorts of implications. When growth sprawls out into the countryside, we risk our water quality and quantity. Rural septic systems just can't do as good a job as cleaning wastewater. And irrigating large rural lawns uses much more water than we do in town. And sprawling growth also affects wildlife. You know, the valley floor is crucial ground for so many critters out there. They need it for wintering range, for calving areas, and for poor habitat. And wildlife tend to habituate to subdivisions. Um, you might call them mild life. Sorry. Uh, Sprawl also affects our recreation, especially hunting and fishing. Access to streams is compromised and hunting becomes more restricted. And wildlife biologists tell us that the number one challenge to maintaining healthy wildlife populations is rural sprawl. And when growth spreads farther out into the valley, we become more and more auto dependent. And that means that other ways of getting around the valley in the future, like biking and bus, are compromised. And when homes are farther apart, a robust transit system for the whole valley of 200,000 of the future just isn't feasible. And that auto-dependence risks our air quality. The more auto-dependent we are, the more we drive, and the more smog we emit. And when we get to 200,000 people, Bridge of Mountains be shrouded in a veil of smog like we see in Missoula sometimes today. Finally, that spread out growth means that our taxes will get higher. Emergency crews and sheriff's deputies have more ground to cover. There's more roads to build and maintain. A recent study suggested that um, taxpayers in the Gallatin Valley can save over $50 million in the next 15 years with a turn, return to more compact growth patterns. But here's the good news. We're seeing in the next few, in the past few years, a return to more urban type of growth. It seems like baby boomers want to move back into town, and the millennials don't want to leave it in the first place. And the really cool thing is we're creating more great neighborhoods than I've seen in my planning career. And it's important to remember that these aren't some egghead architect planner visions for the future. These are the type of neighborhoods the original, that are based upon the original plans for the community. This image of 1884 Bozeman just demonstrates good, solid planning. It's a place built for people, not cars. So here, in my humble opinion, are the keys for planning for a future Gallatin Valley that keep it a great place. Number one, we need to begin to think and plan as a region. We need to get out of our Bozeman, Belgrade, county planning boxes 
and see ourselves as members of the Gallatin Valley community with a stake in its future. And we need to come together finally and decide where to grow, which should be pretty easy, really, because we've already done it. The guiding documents of the county's future growth already call for growth in compact communities surrounded by open space and farms. This image is taken straight from the county's official growth policy. We need to start following it. Third, we need to build the basic urban infrastructure where we want to grow. We need to make it easier and cheaper to build in town. Our roads, water, wastewater, obviously it's not very sexy stuff, but our investments in this infrastructure will determine how our valley looks in the future when we put them in the right place. Now, finally, we can learn from the past and build great neighborhoods where we grow. As I said before, we know how to do that. We've got excellent models right here in Gallatin County for growth in the future. Uh, my colleagues at Future West and I are teaming up with the Chronicle and MSU to profile these great places over the next year. So look for it at any stand. So really the choice is ours. It, it really is. I'd hate to see us go the way of the Teton Valley in Idaho where the vast majority of the growth in that valley has occurred outside of Driggs and Victor to the point that really this is the reality in that, in that valley today. So, we shouldn't be afraid to come together as communities in the Gallatin Valley, learn from the past, plan for a future that looks more like this shot from Amsterdam Church Hill. Compact, walkable, livable cities and towns surrounded by open space and farmland. Thank you.